scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. This morning I'm teaching and my teaching also doubles as a prophetic word that the Lord gave me to declare unto someone and the title of our discussion this morning is go forward it is not just a topic it is also a prophetic word and up front let me declare over someone listen to me go forward does not mean to move you are only forward when the next step becomes ahead of the former step are we together if i move this way I am moving, but I am not going forward. Forward means there it has to be incremental steps. Therefore, I declare unto someone, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by reason of today and this teaching, go forward. Amen. Go forward. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15. This was the prophetic instruction that God gave Moses unto the children of israel they stood before the red sea the egyptians behind them coming with fierce anger and the lord said unto moses wherefore thou criest unto me he said speak unto the children of israel that they go forward regardless the red sea before them regardless the egyptians behind them regardless their discouragement the instruction did not change go forward hallelujah regardless the economy regardless post-covid implications regardless whatever it is the instruction does not change he said go forward hallelujah first samuel chapter 12 and verse 6 we're examining this morning the principles that make for strategic advancement i did tell us yesterday that the kingdom of god um operates by mysteries mysteries they are not meaning hidden secrets they are just secrets that are privy to believers that means if you are not in christ there is something called the wisdom of the just luke 1 17. i think that should be luke 1 17. please give it to us luke chapter 1 and verse 17 here's what it says and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. The wisdom of the just is a peculiar manifestation of God's wisdom that is privy to those who are in the kingdom. Are we together? The Bible says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. Hallelujah. Yes, it says, But it has been revealed to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. And the intent is that it might be freely known to us the things that God has foreordained for our glory. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. May I request that we read it together? 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. Ready? One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, Aha, uh -huh, 
It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron and brought Who advanced Moses and Aaron? It took more than desire. You just saw them moving forward, great strides by the Spirit. But here the prophet is saying, it was the Lord behind the scene, advancing Moses, advancing Aaron. That will be someone's testimony. That mysteriously you will leap over walls, mysteriously you will make extraordinary progress. And when men ask you and try to probe into your extraordinary results, you will refer them to this scripture. That it was the Lord that advanced me, advanced my business, advanced my ministry, advanced my family. It's important that we appreciate this scripture because the Bible says, except the Lord built a house. He never said the house will not be built. He said it will be built but in vain. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchman watched but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But the Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are principles... Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord revealed from this scripture unto Moses and by extension to us believers today that every time you want to see the glory of God made manifest in your life, there are always principles. There are truths that you have to walk in keeping with. This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. The glory of the Lord will not appear just because you desire it, just because you wish for it. There are principles that you have to walk in keeping with. Now, just to quickly point out, please listen carefully. The manifestation of God's power is threefold. That means if an individual is to experience the power of God, there are three levels of experiencing the power of God. The highest level known and revealed from scripture is the power of God that emanates through encounters and through intimacy. Intimacy and encounters bring a measure of power, the highest measure of power known to be given to man from God comes as a result of encounters and intimacy. The second level of God's power is the power that was invested in laws and principles. L-A-W-S, laws and principles. This dimension of power does not depend on a relationship with him. It depends on understanding. Are we together now? Understanding and application. That means it is possible that you do not have a relationship with God, but you are able to access that dimension of his power because relationship is not a requirement to access his power at that level. It depends on your understanding of that principle and then the fortitude to engage. Are we together now? Then the third level of his power is experienced through covenant alignment. That means you may not even understand the dynamics of the power, but when you come under the influence of a man who has a covenant with God, even before you have any understanding, you can begin to experience that grace. Hallelujah. Are we learning now? This is very important. So, I'll give us very quickly for the time that we have this morning a few principles. Now, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of Scripture that these principles are not cunningly devised fables. These are not the figments of a man's imagination. It would be evil to come and waste your time proposing mundane ideas. These principles have been proven first from Scripture and then in the life of people regardless the current circumstances as at the time they were engaging those principles it did not look like it would work i need you to understand that the jealousy of god is back of his principles he literally supervises the manifestation of his laws and principles that by these two immutable things it is impossible for god to lie so the truths that you're hearing are not opinions that you'll be wondering, well, should I believe, should I not? No. 
It says the things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that our hands have handled. You can read a book about a subject and articulate it intelligently from a lecture standpoint, from a theoretical standpoint. But when you are describing an experience, it is not just what you read about, it is what has become your reality. Hallelujah. And I submit to you by the wisdom of the Spirit that what you are learning is not a cunningly devised fable. The Lord has by His Spirit turned men who have embodied these truths that if you walk in keeping with them, it will be impossible to remain at this level. May that be your testimony. In Jesus' name. The first key that I want to share with us this morning as far as experiencing advancement strategic advancement is concerned is principle number one your spiritual connection please write it down in order of priority for any man who desires acceleration advancement growth increase an extraordinary life the Bible mandates that the foundation for any victorious life is God. I call it the God first principle. God dash first principle. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God. Please say it after me. In the beginning. God. One more time. In the beginning, God. For the last time. In the, beginning, God. the moment you distort this order, your life starts going down. The beginning of everything should have God. He is only Omega to what he became Alpha to. You do not start inventing your ideas, then smuggle God into your plans. The jealousy of God mandates that he becomes the originator of every process around your life. Are we together? As simple as this concept is, there are many believers who find themselves wallowing around in mediocrity and defeat because for many people, we feel God is a necessary luggage we have to carry around to justify spirituality. Most people have not seen the value of being spiritual, the value to our spiritual connection. So religiously we say, God, I need you, but in truth, we're just picking him up as an extra luggage in case we meet the devil on the way. Hallelujah. The God first principle. Second Corinthians chapter 26. Let's read from verse 3 to 5. 2 Corinthians 26, Second Chronicles, my apologies, 26, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 3 to 5, 2 Chronicles, not Corinthians, Chronicles 26, thank you. The Bible says, 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. Verse 4. The Bible says, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah did. Verse 5. I like us to read together. Ready? One to read. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Let's repeat that last verse. That's last part again. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Settle it once and for all, ladies and gentlemen, that there is infinite value in the pursuit of God and spiritual things. That at no point in your Christian experience or your destiny pursuit should you have a reason to drop God aside. It is better for your job to be dropped aside. It is better for your ambition to be dropped aside than for you to drop God and his purposes. We, we live in a world that seems to believe that the more civilized you are, the less spiritual you should be. That is not the case in scripture. Thou shalt love the Lord your God, he says, with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. For as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, the Bible says God made him. Look at me. 
Have you seen anything that God made? Do you know how powerful anything God makes becomes? Look at heavens and the earth. The sun has never required assistance to shine. It is older than all of us and yet there is no weariness because God made it. The earth has never been tired of giving. Every year we plant and it produces without fail. What you call famine is demonic manipulation upon the earth. But as far as the earth is concerned, it was mandated to produce. So when the Bible says God made him, think before you say amen. Investigate on the other things that God made. When God makes a thing, there is no depletion. Because everything reflects the power of the one who made it. As long as he sought the Lord, even as a businessman, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord as a preacher, God made him to prosper. The first principle I want you to learn this morning is the value of your spiritual connection. In James chapter 2 and verse 26, James 2 and verse 26, James was teaching on faith and works and he now borrowed a very powerful concept to educate the believers. He says, for as the body, is that in your Bible? Without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. The A part is my interest. That means everybody lives only to the degree to which there is a spirit that causes it to live. The body there is not just talking of a human body. Your business is a body. Where is the spirit that powers it? Your project is a body. Where is the spirit that powers it? That means every physical thing you see only lives, it derives its life from the realm of the spirit. Please understand this. No matter how intelligent, no matter how dexterous you are in understanding, if there is no spiritual backing and connection, there is no future for whatever you are doing. Now, unbelievers understand this. In spite of all their technical skills, they would do all of that in the day, but in the night they know that the basis for their prosperity is their connection to the realm of the spirit. Whether it is demonic, they know they have to outsource an advantage beyond this realm to dominate in this realm. Are we together? The value of your spiritual connection. That extends to your prayer life. That extends to your word study life. That extends to your passion for the things of God. That extends to your appetite for the house of God. The moment your growth becomes the basis for your cutting away from God and his purposes, he will rather limit your growth to preserve your spiritual health. I hope you know the anointing was only designed to fight what did not come from God. If it is God limiting you, no prayer and no anointing can fight it. The anointing does not fight God. It only fights what is antichrist. So before you start praying, verify who is resisting you. Because God also resists men. Your spiritual connection. Men, our audacity in this kingdom. Men are audacious and strong they are able to confront life with confidence not because of anything that they have paul clearly said it that our sufficiency the ability to always rise to the occasion never disappointing that's what we call sufficiency he says our sufficiency is of god who has made us able ministers i like um, philippians 4 and verse 13 he says i can do all things what an arrogant statement if he stopped there we will have a right to vet him who do you think you are to claim you can do all things you know how many things there are to be done in a man's lifetime and here is an apostle standing with audacity and saying I can do all things including that business project I can do all things including spreading my business globally I can do all things but he never stops there he says through Christ through Christ the anointing that is derived from my relationship. You look at your church and you look at this ministry, you are smart and intelligent to know that there are certain results that men unassisted by God cannot produce. John chapter 3, 1 and 2, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. 
And he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he says, for no man can do these things, these miracles which thou doest, except God be with him. There are certain results that are beyond the realm of intellect. There are certain results that are beyond the realm of men. There is a dimension of result that when you produce, it implicates you immediately. It shows that there must be a spirit assisting you. Whether it is demonic or divine, for sure you could not have produced that result on your own and by yourself. David, how would you stand before Goliath and there this beast of a Philistine, a man who threatened the army in Israel. Can you imagine David standing as a young teenager, no track record of being trained in the army and he stands before Saul and says, give me a chance. I can bring this man down. Now he stands before Goliath and Goliath said, am I a dog? I will kill you but respect me. Israel, is this the best you can bring? And David looked at him and said, are you done talking? Let me even tell you how you will die. I will first use this sling to bring you down. Then with your own sword, I will take off your head. He says, you come to me with your bows and your spheres. But there is a covenant. I'm, I'm not coming. I would be stupid to stand before you with a sling. Can I tell you? Every time you stand before situations and circumstances, life will ask you, who sent you? What is the basis? Politically, you know, there's what we call Godfatherism and so on and so forth. When you stand to advocate some kind of favor, they will ask you who sent you. You are in this office. By whose recommendation did you enter here? If you say no one, they say follow that same door and get out of this place. In fact, there are certain jobs you will never get no matter how professional you are until you are able to bring a recommendation and a referral by certain people. Are we together? Who have a relationship with that organization. So men are wise enough to know that there are certain results you cannot get by yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, for many of you who have been trying to pursue certain results and just following an intellectual path alone, you see, there are many routes that propose an excelling life, but the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. It says the end thereof are the ways of death. First principle, God first. In this business, God first. You build that house before you call people to come and jump up and down. Lord, I hand over everything to you. In the beginning, God. Beginning of my life, God. Beginning of my business, God. Beginning of my journey, So as I'm teaching right now, you need to start rearranging the cadres of the things in your mind. Don't say God is in my life as number what? His, his passion is not just to be in your life, it's to be first. God can be scattered somewhere in your life. Money being number one maybe, your ambition being number two. And then you smuggle God somewhere as number seven or ten and be asking God, are you watching things? No, 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 no. If he is not alpha, he cannot be omega. He must be beginning. Are we together now? Yes. So this is my first charge. It's an irrefutable principle for an excelling life. Show me a man who has failed by every definition except for his connection with God I show you a man who is about to emerge and to evolve like an insect evolves from egg lava pupa adult he says rejoice not over me my enemies though I fall the one thing Job had left every other thing left him business connections left sons and daughters left in one day no man on earth as I know has experienced this kind of tragedy but the one thing he had left the wife even said, curse God and die. She was not wicked. She was just frustrated. There's nothing else. When will you start building your life again? When will I start having children again? And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Don't call a God lover a failure. Never call him. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. For the Bible says, listen very carefully. The Bible says with God, all things 
with God, with God, in partnership with God. The Bible and history is full of ordinary men, forgotten and concluded justifiably so by life and by society, but their relationship with God. Like you throw a seed to the ground and you leave it for a long time, there is silence and then you begin to see an emergence until that seed becomes I'm speaking to someone it looks like there is nothing else working in your life except your relationship with God and you're already feeling frustrated men are even saying you've not translated your spirituality to an excelling life let me give you a word of hope that one anchor you have is the greatest thing you have held on to and in the name of Jesus may your manifestation appear in this season your manifestation becomes visible. The Bible says, listen carefully, the Bible says that the word became flesh. The word became flesh and it appeared unto men and we beheld his glory. Even as the glory of the begotten full of grace and truth, the word was made, became flesh. Nothing and no one in your life should sustain the ability to take the place of God. And this has nothing to do with being a preacher. Please listen. This has nothing to do with religious fanatism. It is an orientation you must have for the rest of your life. We live in a world where the higher we rise, the more embarrassed we are to propose our spirituality. So your phone rings and it's a Christian song. You off it quickly because you are in the midst of people who you don't want to show like you are fanatical. You want to show that you are an intelligent person. Not so. Not so. Not so. You will never shy away from what works. The moment you start getting embarrassed at God is an orientation you have that you suspect he will always disappoint you. So you rather not bring in that issue. I believe in God. I believe he is a maker. Not just the maker of the heavens and the earth. The maker of men. When God makes you, you will last. When, God, when men make you on their own, men are vehicles, not the source. Men become your source, they will ruin your life. Are we together? Yes. They will say become king over us today and tomorrow they will say crucify him. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. If you're following so far, say amen. amen. Very quickly, principle number two. The second principle that governs an extraordinary life, governs acceleration in this kingdom, is called vision. Vision. In addition to your spiritual connection, the second key is vision. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. One of the versions will say, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. This is very, very important. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11, so a discussion is between God and this young boy who would later become a mighty prophet, ordained to be a prophet, called Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, the full text is from verse 5, but for sake of time, let's look at verse 11. So he meets this young boy and tells him that while you were in your mother's womb, you have been called and ordained to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah is afraid and he says, ah, um, I, mean, I mean, but I am a child. He says, say not that I am a child, but wherever I send you to, you shall go. And whoever instructs you to speak to, you shall speak. When we get to verse 11, he says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? preparing him for a great life he began to talk about his perception what do you see in light of all that i have told you and he said the rod of an almond tree verse 12 he says you have seen well other versions will say you have seen correctly he says for i will hasten my word that you have seen to perform it amplified says for i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it Vision is the ability to see things as they should be, not as they are. 
the ability, the faculty of perception, the ability to be able to see things from the lens of, of God's standpoint beyond the limitations that you see now. Great people and those who make advancement in life are people who have vision. So you can look at this beautiful auditorium and this entire estate, you can look at it, it's incredible. Art and architecture, among many other fields, but art and architecture are two fields that reveal the creativity of the kingdom in a very profound way. That an artist would sit down and from the lens of his imagination, he would begin to create and transport realities, give frame and pictures and write it down. Do you know how much artworks sell across the globe? You would not imagine millions of dollars for some of them. That was the brainchild of someone's creativity. How about an architect? Whilst you're giving him your brief, he's looking at you and it looks like he's not understanding you until he goes to the paper and he comes up with something so beautiful. Sometimes you are tempted to ask, where did you get this from? This is the power of imagery, imagination. Listen, there is no leader who will thrive in this end time if you do not have the ability to perceive. And that perception is not just about things. It is also about people. You must be able to look at Saul and see Paul. Please help those under the anointing. Are we together now? This is very important. If you do not have the faculty, let me have your attention, please. If you do not have the faculty of perception, you will never be able to rise in life. Look up, please. You see, the way God speaks to men, when God speaks to you, he never speaks to you like he's speaking to a man. He speaks like he's speaking to himself. You know it is God that spoke to you because that version of you cannot do what he's telling you to do. Anything you hear that you have the ability to do at that moment, most likely it is your mind. When God speaks, he speaks to a version of you that is about to come. That is the version that can make this happen. He speaks like he's speaking to himself. Why do you see Gideon, a man who is hiding, and you never call him, oh fearful Gideon. You call him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon is saying, don't flatter me. I'm here hiding, trying to preserve my life. And when he was done with Gideon and changed his perception, he said, go in this thy might. Say vision. vision. One more time, say vision. vision. Yes. Until you see yourself beyond the house you are staying, you will never go out. You see, vision, listen, vision works together with imagination. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 says, Now unto him which is able, who is able to do exceeding abundantly, far above all that we ask or think. Some expressions say imagine. Your imagination is a necessary tool for your advancement. As far as your eyes can see, it says, I have given unto you. Listen, when Abraham and Lot, remember the story of Abraham and Lot? You find it in Genesis 12, the blessing comes upon Abraham and Lot goes with him. By the time we get to chapter 13, both of them had become so prosperous and then there was a contention among their people and Abraham said, we be brethren, let there be no strife. Lot, choose among yourself. And the Bible says, the man went near Sodom. And whilst Abraham was standing there, the Lord made a very instructive statement. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Your legs cannot go there, but your eyes can go up. Listen, everybody on earth can look at the sky. I may not be able to reach the air, maybe to get an airplane that takes me there. But from where I am, once I lift up my eyes, I can see what anybody else is seeing from where thou art lift up thy eyes from where you are not just the location from that financial state lift up your eyes from that educational state lift up your eyes because your life will go in the direction of your eyes you know that your life does not just go in the direction of your heart it is the direction of your eyes if your eyes are looking left chances are excellent that your body will go left are we together yes that is the reason why we have our eyes in front. So that there is no possibility of disrespecting your eyes. If you have to turn left, if your eyes is going right, your body will go right. 
if you find somebody looking straight and going backward indefinitely you will know that that person most likely has a medical situation or whatever because it's not given to men your body moves in the direction of your eyes the organization moves in the direction of vision there is no organization that rises higher than the vision and the perception of its leader it will rise to match your vision and stay there are we together when Jesus walked upon the earth, he had a global vision. Can you imagine? That frail, supposedly frail Nazarene, his vision was not to come and become a celebrity. That was too small a vision. His vision was not to recruit 12 men, not even 120, not even 30. His vision was to permeate the entire earth, to literally be the basis of man's reconciling with God. And as frail as his steps were, that vision would never fail. Look at the world today, Grateful and thankful because of his death. Vision is powerful. From where you are. Apostle, but I'm in a place in Lagos that I do not even want to call the name. Congratulations. Right there, where you are, you can lift up your eyes. Imagination does not, you don't have to pay for it. Vision is powerful. You need, many believers claim scripture, but they do not have the discipline to have a clearly defined vision for their lives and for their organizations. Can I tell you something God told me a few years ago? Disorganization always translates to depletion. Every time there is disorganization, there will always de be depletion. You try to arrange clothes in a bag. Don't fold them, just try to stuff them in. You would find out that the bag may not be able to close. Get the same clothes, iron them, fix everything and arrange them. The bag will close and there will even be extra space. Someone say vision. Can you give me a blueprint of your vision, spiritually speaking? And then in every other aspect of your life, where do you want to go from here? Nobody starts driving on the road. Speed is useless until there is vision. Imagine a man speeding and you say, to where? And you say, I do not know. I always like to give an example. Imagine with me that you got a, uh, well, now we have the whole GPS system, but imagine with me, that you just got a cab with no sense of direction and you tell the man i'm coming to um elevation church and he says oh let's go and then he starts driving around around and then you say are you sure you know the place and he now says well i i'm not i thought i i i'm not sure and you say so why were you running like this you were honing and running every time there is no vision you must slow down you see if you are trying to get a place and you don't exactly know where that place is, the first thing that is affected is your speed. You have to slow down until vision is clear. Are we together? Vision. Go back and have a vision for your life. A vision for your organization. A very clear description. Psychologists and even those in the personal development industry would tell us that the clearer your vision is, the greater it is your sense of achievement. You will be able to achieve it when the vision is clear. I want to make it. That is a very consoling statement, but that is not a vision. Are we together? Yes. I want to make it or I must make it. My life must be great. Wonderful confession. But in the realm of greatness, that statement is empty. What is make it to you? What is rise to you? You have to give your life definition, definition, definition. Apostle, I've been suffering in this Lagos. It looks like things are not working. Okay, what do you want to work? At what point will you know it has worked? Are we together? All I know is my life must change based on what indices. How do you know your life is changing? How do you measure your progress without vision? If you're with me, say amen. amen. One of the ways that you become a visionary person is by leveraging on a visionary association. I've always said that if there are, respectfully speaking, if there are five foolish people around you, you did not count well. There are six. And if there are five wise people around you, you did not count well. There are six. Because you will always be a reflection 
of the people and the company that you keep around you. Most of us are unable to be visionary because there are people in our lives who do not inspire us. Even in our most unproductive state, we are still the best in that group. That is a dangerous group to be in. The Bible says to provoke one another unto godliness. That someone can leave this church and say, Lord, if you can use my pastor, in spite of all his story and everything he's given, you've raised him now and I'm, I'm being blessed by his life. I'm, I'm inspired. I will go back and I will deal with this thing with all my heart. What is making me financially bankrupt? Why is it that favor does not come my way? Why is it that I'm not able to build anything? The Bible says he's able to do that which we pray for and that which we imagine. One last time, say vision. Vision is very powerful because it gives you the legitimacy to say no to many things. There are many, you will offend many people if your no does not have a basis. Vision prunes your relationships. Vision defines your relationships. Vision gives you focus. So that you are busy, but you are not busy doing too many things. In fact, great people are known to be busy people, but the things that they do are not more than five or six. Do you know the, the things, the factors that actually make for your success are not many? When you find yourself doing too many things, is proof that you are failing. You should be busy about a few things that really matter. In the case of Mary and Martha, it says, Mary, you are worried. Martha, Martha, you are worried and obsessed about many things. It says, but one thing is needful. There are a few essentials that when you lay your hand upon, you will command victory. You will command acceleration in an unusual way. May that be your testimony. Yeah. Key number three. Are we learning? Let's see how fast we can go this morning. So the first is your spiritual connection. Second is vision. Number three, the third key that controls the advancement of men is light. L-I-G-H-T, light. The power of knowledge, illumination. Knowledge and understanding. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15 says, the labor of the fool wearied every one of them. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. It says, because, this is the reason. Every time you see weariness, every time you see exhaustion without progress, the Bible is giving you the reason here. The labor of the foolish, the foolish there not being an insult, is a description of a state. It says, it wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because the city is not there. He does not know how to go into the city. Someone say light. Please shout it, say light. The miracle of understanding is a real miracle. When God wants to help a man and help a man's destiny, he quickens your understanding, your ability to comprehend the ways of God, to comprehend the laws that guarantee for success. Show me a man who submits himself to light, to knowledge and understanding. I show you a man who is building an enviable destiny without fail. Understanding is such a requirement for destiny actualization. The Bible says, then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. That was the prayer of Paul for the church in Ephesus. You find that in Ephesians chapter 1, when you read from verse 15 down to 20, he was crying and praying that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ would grant them access to light. He says that you being enlightened, amplified, says the eyes of your understanding, being flooded with light that you may know. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is dangerous. If I fall from off this stage, even in ignorance, I will still pay for it. Gravity does not respect the fact that I am ignorant. It will take a miracle to not fall here and hurt myself because there is a law that is at work. Whether I understand the law or not is not the issue. Are we together now? Yes. Sincerity of heart will never substitute for knowledge. There are many sincere people who believe that because their hearts are pure and without guile, they should 
succeed and you find a lot of people say i am innocent but god what is the meaning of this i'm a nice person i'm not wicked at heart it takes knowledge hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you